QuickBooks Online 2023 e-commerce Amazon sales manual journal entry method Excel example get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023 here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. We've been looking at e-commerce situations where we are selling inventory, but not on ground in a store, but rather online in the web using third party applications, for example, such as a Shopify or an Amazon, for example. In prior presentations, we looked at some examples that mainly focused on the structure of a Shopify structure. Now we'll focus more in on an Amazon type of situation, noting that the general concepts are going to be much the same no matter what the third party platform is because we have a similar structure of needing to take the sales kind of information from the third party platform into the QuickBooks. However, Amazon uh, could have different structures related to, you know, how you're tracking inventory and whatnot. And it could have different structures with who's responsible, for example, with uh, the sales tax. And as a result, some of the reports on the Amazon could be a little bit longer than uh, with the Shopify type of situation. So we'll see a few more categories when we think about our journal entry in the an Amazon type of situation. But note the basic support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it kind of uh ideas that you have available to pull the data in are much the same we can either just try to use the bank feeds or we can try to use a manual method to pull the information from the Amazon and put it in with a journal entry as well as with the bank feeds in combination with the bank feeds. We can use the QBO commerce, which has a similar connection method, which we'll talk about in future presentations. Uh, could do the same thing with Amazon as with Shopify. And then we have the third party applications that could do a similar process as well, such as an A2X. All of these methods will be utilizing uh, bank feeds uh, within them as well. So we'll, we'll talk about this in Excel first so we can kind of see it in a more transparent way using the manual method, noting that when we use these integration softwares, they're going to do a similar thing as we're doing with the manual method. It's just that it's going to automate the grouping. So we'll still have to deal most likely with these clearing accounts and whatnot, unless we tried to use some kind of third party software that pulled in every transaction, which most people recommend against because it kind of bogs down uh, the information in QuickBooks over time possibly and because it could be redundant information. I'm gonna build this again in Excel from scratch. So if you don't wanna build it from scratch, you can kind of follow along once we have it constructed, but I wanna build it from the ground up so you can, you can work with the Excel uh, as well if you so choose. So we just got a blank Excel sheet. I'm gonna zoom in a bit, holding control, zooming in. So I'm scrolling up to 205. Let's go up to like, I don't know, 235. And I'm going to select the whole sheet with the triangle up top. I'm going to right click on this sheet and format the cells. Then I'm going to go to currency to start off with. And I like to go with the negatives here and uh, get rid of the dollar sign. We'll keep the decimals. I'm just going to put my data on the left. So I'm going to name the sheet like Amazon payout example, example. And I'm going to make this a little bit wider. And let's say that I'm going to select, let's, I'm probably going to need it wider than that. I'm going to select these two cells for my header, home tab and font group. I'm going to make this black and white as is my custom for header situations. 
and then we'll put some of our data. So I'm gonna kind of copy and paste the data as we go in, go into this. I'm just gonna say the first component is gonna be Amazon payout, uh, pays out basically every two weeks. And so I'm gonna imagine the payout is $308.47. That's gonna be the payout. By the way, I've got this whole thing selected, home tab and uh, bolded, font group and bold. And there's brackets around this. If you wanna add the brackets, you can go to the font group and put the borders around the whole thing. So now I'm gonna add the details. So we are imagining a similar situation as we did with the Shopify in that we were pulling our information. I'm just gonna to go to the Shopify website, but we're imagining now we're doing a similar process with like an Amazon website in that we could see the payout information we can go to the Amazon website and see the payout information from the Amazon website. And I believe they pay out like every two weeks. So the payout is gonna be including a bunch of different sales, hopefully, if we're selling a bunch of stuff, it's not coming in sale by sale. It's got a bunch of different sales that are being grouped together in that payout. What we would like to do is take the information from Amazon and break it out so that we can then see the detail and then we're going to enter a journal entry in a similar fashion. So that's what, so now we're going to imagine we're going into Amazon in a similar fashion as we did with like a Shopify, pull out the detail of this particular payment so that we can see all of the line items within it. Now, Amazon, again, because Amazon might be taking care of a lot more things uh, than possibly a Shopify where you might be responsible for more items than the Amazon might have more line items that you're gonna have to deal with and say, well, <laughs> where does this line item go? And so, uh, so you might have to do a little bit of research, but once you figure it out, you can have a template of all of the line items where, where, these, where the Amazon charges and whatnot can go. So for example, I, I'm just gonna make up some stuff here that might beyond like an Amazon report. I got commissions for Amazon and we're going to say these are these are the order item fees, uh, $90.26. And then I'm going to just, I'm going to copy these over so I don't have to, you know, watch me type it. Commission for Amazon refund item fees. I'm going to say that's $16. We're going to say that we have a line item for uh, a disposal. Uh, other transactions, 17 cents. We've got a line item for FBA per unit fulfillment fee, 87. We've got a line item for uh, principal Amazon order item fee. Uh, so, so that's the order item price. And then we're gonna say we have another one for principal Amazon refund item price. So refund, we're gonna say we have another one for refund commission Amazon refund item fees let's make that a little bit larger so we could see it something like that and so then we've got another one for sales tax service fee now amazon and something like a shopify for sales tax which we might get into it a little bit later could have different rules on the sales tax for because amazon for example uh in some cases might be more responsible for sales tax in most uh, states, but there could be some states where they're not responsible for sales tax, in which case you might be responsible for sales tax if you qualify to be subject to sales tax in the state and so on and so forth. So that's the whole, so we could dive into that uh, later, but there's that. We got another line item, uh, shipping Amazon order price. We've got another line item we're going to say is shipping Amazon order promotion. And another line item that we're going to say is shipping chargeback we're going to say another amazon line item which is going to be shipping tax amazon order order item price another line item we're going to say is storage fee other transaction another line item we're going to say is tax uh, amazon another line item tax amazon refund item price and then balance of the settlement and I'm going to sum this up to sum. So this is going to be a sum formula equals the sum of all this stuff. And that comes out and this should, uh, this should 
equal this number up top. So I'm gonna change this number up top and I'm gonna make it positive by saying negative of this number and that's gonna be our, our deposit. So if we, just, if, we, if we just allowed the deposit to happen and I've got a bunch of empty, empty rows up top, let me delete some of these rows. I'm gonna put my cursor on column or row one down to row five, right click, click the selected rows and delete them. So if we just waited for the deposit to happen, we would just be entering the deposit and we wouldn't be taking into account all this different stuff that is happening down here, which is, you know, there's more, more, there's a whole bunch of potential line items that can go on in an Amazon store. Again, depending on how your Amazon store is going to be set up. So if we don't take all this into account, we're just gonna have that one line item. We'll show, we'll show an example of that uh, now. So let's basically build our little spreadsheet and we'll imagine that we're just gonna wait till the deposit happens and then we'll do our journal entry method so that we take all of this other stuff into consideration. So I'm gonna build our same, uh, our, our same kind of worksheet to, to see this in Excel, to, to post this out in Excel. So I'm gonna make this skinny I'm gonna say these are the accounts. This is gonna be the debits and credits. I'll make this one a little bit lighter. I've got the hiccups. I'm gonna then make this black and white. Home tab, font group, black and white. I wanna make this the same skinny. F needs to be the same skinny size as C. So I'm gonna put my cursor on C, home tab, format, paint it to F, and then let's build our trial balance. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to put it down here, accounts. And then I'm going to call this the beginning trial balance. And then these are going to be the journal entries. And then this is going to be the end trial balance. And I'm going to this needs to be an R, trial, tile balance. We're flooring a bathroom or something with the tiles. Font, black, white, center. I'll make this black and white. I'll make the accounts a little bit larger. And then I'm just going to list out the accounts uh, that we might use in this. So I'm just going to list out checking, checking account, Amazon payments, clearing. Now we won't use all of these accounts using the cash method, but when we convert to the, the journal entry method, we will use more of these accounts. All right, so Amazon clearing. What else do we have? Inventory, inventory, Amazon sales, tax, payable, equity, Amazon sales, space, space, because I don't want it to repeat stuff. Refunds, cost of goods sold, Amazon seller fees and charges, Amazon FBA fees, Amazon shipping. Okay, so there it is. And I'll make the equities the middle. So I usually make that like blue to, to show that that's between the balance sheet and the income statement. Home tab, font group. I'm gonna make it dark blue and white so that we can see, this is basically our balance sheet on top of our income statement. So we can see this all nice and transparent in one space. I'm gonna put a bunch of zeros here because there is nothing in our beginning balance. We probably don't even need this column, but I like to do the whole thing uh, so that we could see the whole thing. So I'm going to then sum this up this way. So we're going to put our entries in here, beginning balance plus the entries is the ending balance, which is just the ending balance because we don't, we don't have anything in the beginning balances, but still, I'm going to copy this down then. Same formula all the way down. Looks nice. And then this is going to be the total debits and credits. I'm gonna sum this up equals the SUM, our famous sum formula, sum it up. And then I'll copy this across with the fill handle, put an underline here maybe, 
home tab, font group, underline. And this is gonna be our net, net income. Boom. All right, and then we'll sum this up. The net income is just everything from equity on down, revenue minus expenses, not including the total on the debits and credits. I'm gonna copy that across, putting my cursor on the fill handle, copy this across. I know I'm doing this fast, but we've done it before and I, it's not an Excel course, so I just wanna map it out fairly quickly here. And then I'm gonna put some borders around this whole thing. Home tab, font group, borderize it. Let's make this middle column blue because that's where our data input's gonna be. That's what I like to do, make it blue. Font group, drop down. I like the light blue, which isn't here. So I'm gonna go to this thing, standard colors, that light blue right there. That's what I'm gonna use, light blue. And then down here, I want it to turn like red if it's not in balance, which should be in balance with a zero. So if it's anything other than zero, although I'll give it a two, a $2 plus minus range uh, to turn red if it goes outside that range. So I'm gonna say conditional formatting. If it goes greater than two, make it red. And then conditional formatting. If it goes, if it goes, wait, that's the wrong one. Less than negative two, make it red. But if it's between negative, that's not between. Where's my between thing? But if it's between, between, there it is, negative two and two, then I want you to make it green because then we're good to go. And that's what green means, right? That's what green means. So if it goes to three, turns red. If it goes to negative three, turns red. But if it's still under two, we're good to go. All right, yo, good to go. All right, yo, okay. Uh, all right, let's make this, let's say this was, was uh, negative, or let's say this was negative three. That's gonna be negative numbers are income. So I'm gonna do another conditional formatting down here. At the bottom, I'll make this home tab font group. Let's make this black and white. That's gonna be my default. I don't want it to turn red when it's negative because negative is actually good for a credit balance on net income. So I wanna right click on these cells, format paint this thing, and I don't want this negative thing there to turn red just for these cells. Turn that off, don't do that. And then I'm gonna make it black and white, and then, and then I want it to be green when it's negative, just to be sure that negative is good, just so I can make sure I know that. So I'm gonna go up top and then say, if this thing is greater than zero, I don't wanna use the same green fill cause then it kind of gets confusing. So I'm gonna say, I wanna use a custom thing and just use the font color and I wanna make it this green like that. And then it didn't do it. What happened? K pos O, let's do it again. I undid it, I think. I'm gonna say if this is, if it's less than, if it's less than, if it's less than zero, that's when I want you to do it. We want you to say, then it's gonna be uh, custom and then font, and then I want you to make it green. Okay, that's what I wanna see. That's what I wanna see. All right, then I'm gonna delete this. And then let's make this give us some, some, uh, blue. So I'm going to make this bordered and uh, blue. So there we have that. Okay. Okay. So there we have it. So, so notice that it, if I was, so now I've got my little worksheet here. Let's do the simple method and then we'll do the more complex method in a following presentation. So if it was just, if we just waited till something cleared the bank, then all we would have for our transaction would be using the bank feeds most likely. This thing hits the checking account for the total of this amount. The other side we just put into Amazon sales, our revenue account. The credits are gonna be negative. And so what would happen in QuickBooks, we would just say it would do this, increase the checking account, 
and then the sales would go up in a credit direction, which is actually good. That's why I have a green number. Net income would go up by that. And then, and then at the, at the end of, of the year, so that could be an easy thing to do, right? We don't have a lot of detail, but it's like, okay, I can balance my checking account and my sales doesn't have all the detail, but at least my net income would should be in essence, right? You know, my, we have timing differences. We don't have all this detail, but hopefully my net income uh, is correct. And maybe I don't even have to deal with sales tax because possibly Amazon is the one that's responsible depending on your circumstances. So, so but you might get a 1099 like at the end of the year let's say you got a form 1099 at the end of the year let's say this was your year's worth of revenue and it says your revenue should be let's say 601.71 and so i'm gonna so the problem with that the easiest thing to do then is to say okay well if i make my income statement having this is my revenue uh then am then then the iris might get mad at me because and, and question me because they're going to say I got a 1099 says that top line is revenue and we could we could do the simple estimate assumption thing and say well maybe the 1099 is just right and the difference is simply all this other stuff and instead of breaking all this other stuff out I'll just call it Amazon charges and fees right <laughs> so you could and so that could be the easiest thing to do right we could say all right well then I'll just say that uh we'll just call it amazon charges and fees and then amazon revenue and we'll just say that the difference is going to be equal to what it says on the 1099 i assume i assume is correct minus this uh uh three nine one eighty eight and so i'll just make my and, and if i did that i'll just make my amazon sales go up by this amount and then I'll make my net charges go up so there's no impact on the net income it's the same but now my revenue line lines up and hopefully you know the IRS doesn't get mad at me or anything like that so that's one simple method you can use just like with the Shopify store if you had both Shopify and Amazon you're probably going to use a similar method for both of them you can use a you know a nice easy method but still what don't you have using this method you, you 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 don't have a lot of detail for your you know for taxes you don't have a lot of you know it's an estimate that's happening if you have to deal with sales taxes then you got you're gonna have to find some way to deal with the sales tax unless amazon is the one that's responsible for the sales tax depending on your situa situation and obviously all these fees and charges uh could be useful information uh, when you're doing internal bookkeeping and trying to think about what products you should be purchasing and, and where you should be selling different items. If you have different stores, for example, should I sell it on Amazon or elsewhere? What should my price points be and all that kind of good stuff. So let's just set up the worksheet now and imagine the second method. So I'm going to put my cursor on column C, the skinny, and I'm going to go over to column J, right click on the whole thing and copy it. And I'll paste it right here on column K. So now we have the same stuff over here. I'm going to put my cursor on the on these items and delete. And then I'll blueify this one. Right click and blueify it. And then delete this stuff. The second method. Let's go ahead and hide this stuff that we just did. So we can see our new stuff right next to our data. I'm going to put my cursor on column C drag over to column J, CJ, there's CJ right there, and right click and hide that stuff. So the second method would be that we try to we try to break, we try to get this information from Amazon for each payout, every two week payout or whatever they do it, and then try to break out in a journal entry this information and use a clearing account to then put it into uh, that'll match our checking account. So that might look something like this. I'll do this fairly quickly. I'm going to say, I'm going to try to match up these line items. So I'm going to say the first one is going to go to Amazon, Amazon seller charges and fees. I'm going to have some accounts that are repeated. Now you might group these differently. I'm just giving an example here because all of these line items that come on an Amazon sales report sheet might not have its own account 
in your general ledger. You might group some of them together and the groupings that you decide are best could differ depending on what you think is, is most important. So I'm just gonna give some examples of how you might you know break this stuff out. So I'm gonna say the next one is gonna be, I'll put it into the same thing, seller Amazon fees. And I'm gonna pick this one up. And then I'm gonna say the next one is gonna be, let's say Amazon FBA. And that's gonna be the uh, 17, hold on a second. Let's actually put that one in. I'm just gonna do, put that in the same one, Amazon seller fees for the 17. And then I'm gonna go to the Amazon FBA. Uh, what happened there? I made it, it's white because it's the other formatting. I'm gonna format paint this, boom, okay. And then this one is gonna be the 87. And then I'm gonna put this one in the Amazon uh, FBA. So wait a second, this is gonna, no, this is gonna be Amazon sales. Hopefully I'm lining all these up, doing this fairly quickly here. Uh, Amazon sales 701 and then Amazon refunds so we had amazon refunds where's the amazon refunds oh i just called them refunds okay let's put amazon refunds amazon refunds all right and and that's gonna be i'll just start copying these down i'll copy that down boom and then i've got uh fees more fees and seller charges and more fees and seller charges, I'm gonna say. Bringing these two down. And then we've got Amazon shipping. So Amazon shipping, I'm gonna say these three are Amazon shipping. That doesn't work, you can't do that. What are you doing? Amazon shipping. And then I can copy these down. Amazon shipping. And then Amazon sales tax collection and so that's going to be that one and then we've got amazon uh, fba fees i'll copy that down oh wait a sec that's not the one you copy down pull it together man pull it together and then sales tax amazon sales tax collected sales tax payable i think i'm gonna put here and then again uh amazon sales tax and there we have that so i'm going to copy that down boom boom and then we finally have the amazon clearing account okay all right let's make all this blue i'm going to blueify this blue borders and the clearing accounts the negative sum of all of this stuff uh, which comes out to my payment so there's our there's our journal entry now i hopefully i mapped this out all correctly so this is coming from there if i messed anything up you know i apologize but this is the idea right and if you want if you map it differently uh, on some of these line items that you think it should be mapped differently then you can choose a different mapping and so on uh and, and this is a similar concept that you will you will see with the software if you use like quickbooks connect for example that they'll give you some suggested accounts to, to tie these out to but it, but you can change them and customize them either if you do them manually or with the software all right let's post this out hopefully i have this right so i'm gonna let's do this one at a time i'm gonna say here we go here we go, here we go now. I could do all three of these at the same time. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be fees, Amazon fees. So I'm gonna say this is this plus this plus this. Whoop, not that, this one. And then we're on the FBA fees. So Amazon FBA, this is gonna be, let's say equal to that, boom. F oh no, hold on a second. Amazon, you're going too fast. This equals the FBA fees. 
let's do let's do it and then i'll mark it after so amazon sales is going to equal that one and then i'll make that green amazon refunds is going to be right here it's going to equal that one and then i'll make it green and then amazon seller fees and charges is uh here double clicking on it because something's in it plus this plus this enter and greenify those amazon shipping equals this plus this plus this enter greenify those and then amazon sales tax payable is here equals uh that and greenify and then amazon fba fees double click on those plus this one enter greenify and then amazon sales tax payable double clicking on it because something's in it plus this plus this enter greenify and then the clearing account is here i'll say equals the clearing and that brings the debits and credits back down to zero with some possibly some rounding in it but and so then so here's our net amount so the net amount notice doesn't tie out exactly to what we had before the 391.88 because we had some you know balance sheet item with the sales tax up top but uh that's so that's the general idea but now we've got the sales the sales the refunds which are contra uh sales accounts and then we've got the amazon seller fees the fba fees and the and and the shipping that we collected this is shipping that we collected income and then we're gonna have the shipping expenses possibly that will be on the expense side of things and uh, you could argue whether these should be some of these should be included in cost of goods sold uh, or not, but this is the the general idea to break out the detail. So you can see this could be useful for kind of decision making uh, and give us more detail. And again, it could help us with the sales tax if we have to deal with the sales tax, uh, and and that could depend on your current situation with Amazon because for some states and in some situations they might be dealing with the sales tax, and, which could make it easier in some cases on your end but obviously they charge for all that all that easiness <laughs> so then we have this in the clearing account now we could have deposited this directly into the checking account because it should match what actually goes into our checking account and then we can use the matching mechanism to tie it out although if we did that in quickbooks we might not have be able to use a journal entry but rather like a deposit form we could still use a deposit form and make a journal entry out of it in essence but uh, the clearing account is a good conceptual framework. So then we're going to see it go into the checking account. And when it hits the checking account, we'll see it happening on the bank feeds, which will end up with a journal entry that looks like this. I'm going to blueify down here. And that's just simply going to be an increase to the checking account and a decrease to the clearing account for the net deposit. So then once we see that clear using the bank feeds in QuickBooks, we would say this is gonna increase, Amazon payments is gonna decrease. And we take it out of the clearing account and put it into the bank account. That gives us the more detail. Now, again, if this is overwhelming to construct this note, you might say, well, I'm gonna do it the easy way. I just wanna connect Amazon to QuickBooks using the QuickBooks Connect app, for example. Well, QuickBooks Connect is still gonna basically do this, right? It, because it's not gonna pull in all of the data one at a time, that would be even worse. It's gonna use this clearing account concept method to summarize the, the transactions because that's the thing to do. It's just trying to automate doing that. It's gonna try to pull in the, the information from Amazon and group it together in a similar fashion. And it'll try to create some of these accounts so we can use their custom accounts that they they basically set up uh so it could be easier in that way but you're still gonna have to deal with usually a clearing account and and deal with that same conceptual concept of grouping these transactions together putting them into one journal entry pulling them into a clearing account and then using the bank feeds to pull it from the clearing account into the checking account so we'll do that next time